I got some funds to attend school to learn Swedish. The day I graduated, I came home. There was a letter there from American Express inviting me to come to Switzerland. I worked for a fellow before in Sweden, uh, Jack Jordan. He was Josephine Baker Road Manager. And he also used to run a restaurant in Stockholm, Sweden, called The Best of Harlem. All of the big names during that particular time, when they came to Sweden, they would go to him. But his cooking staff wasn't uh, <laughs> the best of Harlem. And somebody told him that, hey, there's a guy that lives in Gothenburg. Man, you should taste it. He's a bad soul food cook. That's how I met Jack Jordan. And after the restaurant closed, uh, we had no contact until that letter came. Well, the deal he made was he found out that the musicians that came to Montreux for the Montreux Jazz Festival were complaining about having soul food. He said that he could provide the soul food because he knew a, a chef, which he was talking about me, that can prepare for the musicians, just for the musicians now. And when I got there, we got set up and we're doing fried chicken that first day. I did barbecue, we did uh, coleslaw, I did beans, uh, beans and rice. You know, like, I had it set up like a little buffet. Muddy Waters used to like my chicken. And you know, he had some dentures. He, he used to always come and nut me. I'm gonna take my dentures out and turn around here so I can chew on this. this. <laughs> uh, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Stan Getz, that's another guy. <laughs> we, we've been tight. My second day, I was sitting down to the table with uh, the guy who operate the whole thing. Nina Simone was sitting at the table, but her back was turned. As, as I approached it, I said, oh wow, look at this beautiful lady, yeah. It's Sun Ra, I don't know, you ever heard of Sun Ra? He looked for us because he traveled with like about 25 people. And like he said, he couldn't afford to have all these people eating in restaurants every day. So if you guys can make a pot of some nice, <laughs> You know, things like that, for the band and all that. So we did a lot of that. Everybody, all of a sudden, they wanted to eat what the musician was eating. So people often to buy and when they come in with money in the hands and so on. So, well, we didn't even know what to charge. We got to a point uh, like the, the year I followed, all people say, Harlem, we were like jazz musicians. You gonna be at such and such a place, uh, Chateau Vallon or Juan Le Pan, a jazz festival here? And we say, yep, that's <laughs> okay, we'll be there. All the jazz greatest, all of them, you name them, they were around our tables, all of them. Hey, so what time you go on, man? Oh man, I don't go on till eight, but uh, so, you know, God, and Jack used to keep a bottle of this high-priced scotch. <laughs> and those guys, so they, they would always, I mean, wherever we went, they would always be in, in the back with us. 